You're listening to Common Sense. If you'd like to know more about what Josh is talking about today, you can visit his website, joshkimbrell.com, and find articles, archives, and even sign up for the newsletter. It's all available at joshkimbrell.com. Now here's the host of Common Sense, Josh Kimbrell. All right, welcome back into the program. Cell phone issues aside, I love Alexa Newman from the Carolina Pregnancy Center. And if you're listening, Alexa, I love you dearly. Not mad at you. Sorry we had cell phone issues. I look forward uh, to playing in the Tee It Up for Life tournament on Saturday. And for those of you all still interested, uh, carolinapregnancy.org, and you can get involved. Now, I'm doing something I normally never do. Uh, because we are a regional program, and because our audience is statewide, we normally deal with state issues only. I rarely ever get down to the city level, uh, but we're in Greenville. This show is broadcast from just outside Greenville, South Carolina. And while we have folks all across the upstate and indeed the state who listen, uh, I think that decisions are made by those who show up at every level. And I'm going to get engaged here in a city council race in Greenville. It's an at-large seat. It's the only uh, contested seat in Greenville city government this fall, with the exception of water commissioner. My friend Deb Sofield, uh, who does First Monday with the Republican Party here in Greenville, um, Deb is running for re-election as water commissioner against the Democrat, and Deb will crush him. But there's an at-large seat in the city council. And Gay Sprague is the current Democratic incumbent. And she'd like to move Greenville a little more to the left. And anybody in this audience knows that that just keeps me awake at night. So my friend Matt Foster is running for this at-large seat. The election is Tuesday, November the 5th. Now, this is Greenville, South Carolina. This is a red county and a red state. we got to kick Gay Sprague out of that city council seat, uh, particularly for social and economic reasons. So Matt Foster is here with us, and Matt, welcome to Common Sense. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate the opportunity. You know, I like it that Matt's got, he's still got pigmentation in his hair, too. Uh, I, so, I'm kidding, of course. I love, so does Tim Scott. Tim Scott's like 40. But I talk to all these guys on here who are experts at the Heritage Foundation and stuff, and I'm usually the youngest guy in the room. Not today. Well, we're in the same generation, Josh. I think it's time for people to stand up and suit up. I'll tell you what. Well, I agree. So how's it looking for you? I mean, Gay is in her first term. That's She's right. She's running for re-election as a Democrat. H- has support, hasn't met a tax increase or a fee increase she doesn't like, uh, hasn't really, in my view, pushed a free market agenda in Greenville, and would support, in my view, a socially liberal position as well. And so you're running to unseat her, and it looks like you're gaining some momentum, Matt. Big time. We have less than three weeks left until election day, and we're just trying to get the vote out. It's an off election year. I really need all of our supporters to get out and vote, uh, help us volunteer, putting yard signs out. Uh, contributing towards the campaign, but let me tell you a little bit why I decided to run. Um, I'm not originally from Greenville. I moved here in 96, and so I had a choice. I uh, came to Greenville so that I could stay here to raise a family, and Greenville has done great things in the past, but I think there are some things that we can change to help make Greenville even better in the future. So we have a platform of have a say and see the difference. And so that's what I want people to recognize. I want people to have the opportunity to be able to connect with someone that will listen to them so that what matters to them matters to me. And that is what I'm going to be bringing. Well, recently, Matt, I was named to a board of directors for a statewide foundation called Citizens for a Free Market. And we're working with members of the legislature to promote uh, tax reform, fundamental tax reform. And in my view, to get, get away from what I think is economic central planning, even in one of the most conservative states in the union here in South Carolina, thank God for that, we have this tendency yep. to want to do central planning. We have a commerce department in Columbia that wants to pick winners and losers when it comes to economics. They'll give targeted tax deals to one company, not to another. Uh, I'm an econ undergrad kind of guy. Uh, I studied econ undergrad at North Greenville, and I went to business school. And I can tell you, uh, from that experience and being in banking, whenever you pick winners and losers from the government level, it doesn't work out well for small business owners. It doesn't work out well for middle, the middle class building a strong middle class. So here in Greenville, a few weeks ago, I was at lunch mm-hmm. with a real estate developer who shall remain nameless. <laughs> who is, he's not one of the necessarily the top guys, but he's, pretty, he's getting up there. He's moving up. Younger guy, doing a great job. And he wanted to buy some property. Uh, they're near, pretty close to the baseball stadium. Mm-hmm. And it was the, the folks that were selling it were just trying to get rid of it. It was an asset on their books. They wanted to move it. And he thought, I'm going to buy this property uh, sort of as a speculative investment to use later for commercial development. 
City of Greenville, some of our eminent central planners on city council said, nah, we'll buy it. And they kept outbidding a private developer with our tax money. Wow. So they ended up paying well over $30,000 more than the asking price to buy this piece of property away from a private developer so they can turn around and sell it to another developer later when they desire to do so. That, in my view, is a massive impediment to the free market in the city of Greenville. Oh, yeah. And for city council to use tax money to buy private property to compete with private developers, in my view, is unethical. Matt Foster, what do you say? Man, I'm right with you, Josh. I mean, when, when is the government supposed to be in the real estate business? When? And, and, and what happens is that they take these properties and they'll trade them for sweetheart deals to get what the city council's agendas are or what the city wants to accomplish without asking what the people want. Well, and I agree with you. I don't, I don't know why the government should be in the real estate business. And we've, we've taken a few swipes here on the show. My producer, Mr. Miller, has heard me do that. Mm. Um, I've long believed, uh, when I was an undergrad, I did an internship. Now, I, I wasn't like on his full style for anything, and I probably shouldn't even admit this anymore because I always have to put the qualifier before Argentina. But I did an internship with Governor Mark Sanford, who, uh, in spite of the personal issues there, I thought was a fine governor when it came to economic policy. And he used to say all the time when he traveled the state, we need to create soil conditions that are conducive to good business, yep. not just pick winners and losers. So I know you share that philosophy, Matt. Absolutely. What I'd would be your idea of uh, creating great soil conditions in the city of Greenville? You're exactly right. My dad actually is a small business owner, so entrepreneurship is in my, uh, in my blood. Quality of life is one of the single biggest indicators of, a, of an economically um, sustainable city. And what I see here happening in Greenville is more restaurants, more bars. What we need is to first, number one, increase our median income. We're lagging behind the national average. We're at a $35,000 median salary, whereas the national average is 41000 And so how do we bring in more corporate jobs? How do we bring in more technology jobs, help promote a more diverse workforce that's talented and skilled to help thrive for our future community. Well, even in South Carolina, that statistic you just cited for a median household income is lower than the state figure. And, and in my view, that's in no small part due to picking winners and losers. The way you create good paying jobs is empower entrepreneurs. Exactly. Now, I'm all for big companies. I like big companies. I like all companies. But if you take tax dollars away from small businesses and mom and pop operations, only to redirect those to politically well-connected corporations, you dry up the source of small business jobs. And that means that people have very little choice but to go to a few large employers in town. We've been there, done that. I was born and raised here. I was raised in Spartanburg County, moved to Greenville. We had textiles. Yeah. Uh, guess how those textiles got here, Matt Foster? Mostly through targeted tax deals. Everybody worked for the textile mills. When they went down, everybody went with them. I think a well-diversified economy driven by free market economics is the right way forward. And that's why I'm certainly supporting you for this city council at large seat in Greenville. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, I'm talking to my friend Matt Foster, who's running for an at-large city council seat in the city of Greenville. Uh, we're against Gay Sprague, who is in her first term as a Democrat in Greenville. We cannot have this. Um, Matt, real quickly, we got a call from Carla, who has a question. I'm, I'm thinking that question is probably directed at you, but it could be at me. So, Carla, shoot. Yes, Matt. Um, I have a question for you. As a business owner in downtown Greenville, I know that our crime is seriously increasing in our area. And I'm hearing rumors that they're wanting to shut down the parks to basically the law-abiding citizens in an attempt to make downtown less crime-ridden. The very individuals that are frequenting the parks are also those individuals that help us with our business. And I just kind of wanted to see your thoughts about that and what your plans may be for reducing crime in downtown. Hey, Carla, thanks for asking me that question. That is the number one concern I've been hearing running, running in this race. Uh, crime is a serious issue. I mean, it hurts business. It hurts our, uh, our lifestyle. It hurts the image of Greenville. We don't want to be a, a, another Columbia with what they're going through. Um, listen, I, 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 I agree with you. They are coming up with things that aren't maybe the best solutions to help solve the crime challenges here in the city of Greenville. For example, they are closing the parks at 9 p.m. That means if you want to go play tennis at Cleveland Park or if you want to walk through Falls Park, we as law-abiding citizens will be ticketed for being in the park after 9 p.m. They're hiring unarmed, non-uniformed security guards to help enforce uh, the law. 
that's inefficient. What we can offer, what I want to bring, is a, a new solution to ask the police officers in their area to stop by one business every, every day during their shift and make that connection, make that relationship so that they know that who they're serving and who they're protecting. I also think that there's some solutions we can bring forward with, uh, with being more effective with our resources, you know, thinning out some of the vegetation so that uh, we can feel safer. Some of the lighting of the darker areas of the park. We should not be falling in cowardly against these criminals by closing our park at 9 p.m. Not acceptable. There are other things we can do. Well, before we go to a break, and Carla, thank you for your call. Uh, let's try to let's take a call from Jack. Jack, go ahead. Yes, uh, Matt, uh, my name's Jack, and I just wanted to tell you, first of all, I'm impressed by the fact that you're a young professional who's taken the initiative to run for office. And I'm just curious as to what your plan is to get more young professionals involved in the political process on the uh, city council level. That's great. Well, I think this is where it starts. We can make a difference here at the city council level, and and we need to engage our young professional group. Who else better to connect with than another young professional? I think that what we're missing is a an engaged young professional group, a council that advises city council. They have a young commission board, but you have to be under 21. We don't have anything that services the 21 through 39 age bracket. We need one to help voice their concerns, what they want to see Greenville as in the future. And then me being out there involved in all the young professional events, doing town hall meetings once a month in each neighborhood, we can bring awareness as to what city council does and how others can be involved so that we can keep the young professionals in Greenville. Our generation is very transient. We need to find a reason for them to stay here, to raise a family here, and to secure their roots here by making investments into our community. Well, Jack, thank you for your call. Matt Foster is a good answer. I, look, I, as I told you all on the program here today, I rarely ever get involved in a city council race. But in South Carolina, we're facing some serious challenges. Whether that's an economic issue, I think we need to unleash the free market in this state, which is why I serve on the Citizens for a Free Market or Citizens for a Free Market Foundation. That's why we have the Palmetto Conservative Alliance Foundation on this program. Uh, but I also think we have some social challenges. So as we part, I want to ask you one last question, Matt. Absolutely. Uh, there's in Charlotte, North Carolina, the new, well, the most recent mayor, who's now the Secretary of Transportation. If y'all have driven around Charlotte, go figure, why would you nominate the mayor of Charlotte to be the Secretary of Transportation? Um, but I digress. <laughs> um, they started moving towards radically redefining families in Charlotte, North Carolina. The city of Charlotte joined the National Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender Cities Organization. Uh, there are some groups we've been made aware here in the state. Uh, I get the emails, trust me. Uh, they don't like me much, who would love to see Greenville, South Carolina join that as well. Uh, please tell me if you're a city council member, you're going to stand for natural marriage and the family in our city and our state. I absolutely will. I've uh, grown up Catholic. I went to St. Joseph's. I am a strong pro-life and uh, marriage between a man and a woman. Well, I'm proud of you, Matt Foster. I'm looking forward to you beating Gay Sprague in this you, at-large election. Uh, we're going to send this out. If y'all are on our email list, uh, this will hit the Greenville County list later tonight. We'll send you the audio uh, and my endorsement for Matt for City Council. I'm glad to see more young conservatives who are uh, in the fight. It's not good enough just to be a young conservative. we got to fight. That's right. Our state, our state's on the line. So, Matt Foster, for City Council, tell us your website. Foster2013.com. Foster2013.com, and you all can count me among your supporters. Matt, thank you, sir. Thank you, Josh.